Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back for another video. In this video today, we're going to talk about annotation text part 2. So, approximately one, two weeks ago, I released part 1, which was more or less about 2D sequences. But today, we're going to talk about 3D sequences. The annotation text is more or less the same, but there are a few variations. So, if you're interested, stick around and I will show you. For those who are new, my name is Bakken again. I'm a number Ryan with Argopher. In my channel, I'm covering things from basic to advanced, some like topics, tutorials, just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. So if you haven't watched part one yet, I really recommend you to do so because on the part two, I really gonna talk a little bit uh, continuously from my last part. So it's a little bit better to understand if you watch the part one first. Nonetheless, let's go to my presentation. I will show you. All right, so currently we are at the uh, 1.5 Tesla Siemens scanner. It's Access 70, but it's more or less the same with other software as well. So if you look at this 3D sequence right here, um, do not look at the scan time or the TRNT parameters because it's just push maximum and there's no good weighted or good images. It's just a phantom. I just tried to make it fast so I could show the different tags around and the different names and highlight that which is important. Okay, the first one I want to talk about is the slag text. Like it's, it's the same as on the 2D, it says here on this corner. And this one is one millimeter, one millimeter here. But if you remember from my last video, I was talking about the distance factor. There is no distance factor on 3D because it's a volume, right? And the next corner right here, we're going to talk about resolution. So the field of view I have here is 256, as says there. and 256 256 and then you can see why is the matrix 512 but it says 256 right there strange right it's not that kind of strange because you're using interpolation mode which means you are doubling up with the matrix so if you do the calculation it says that 256 divided by 256 it's one millimeter and then you're using the interpolation function so you now get 0 0.5 on the reconstructions on the uh, on the phase and the frequency okay so at least if they're interpolated you will see with an eye here it means that it's interpolated it's also here ticked on there interpolated so let's talk about something different so what happens when you turn off the interpolation like here so as you can see here it's now 0 0.98 of course it is because we're using a field of view of 250 if you take 250 divided by 256, you will get 0 0.98. So 0 0.98, 0 0.98 in one millimeter. And there's no interpolation function on, so that's why the reconstruction is also the same. 0 0.98 on the upper uh, row right here. So here is no I. No I means there is no interpolation, which is good. But remember, when you talk about interpolation here, it's for the phase and the frequency we are not talking about interpolation for the slice resolution and this leads to the next topic right here the slice resolution i made a video about slice resolution where i was diving into that topic trying to explain that i will leave the link in the description so if you go there you can put uh, go directly to my video but nonetheless with the slice resolution you can see here now we are still going for one millimeter one millimeter and then it's interpolated on and the reconstruction as I told you earlier 0 0.5 0 0.5 and you can see the interpolation is on right there okay but then on the slice resolution we are doing 50 percent so that means that you are now uh, you're having a acquisition of two millimeter and then you reconstruct it down to one millimeter it sounds strange it sounds difficult but just you don't have to understand everything now but just know that this is how it works and if you want to have a further understanding, watch the other video. But it takes time to understand. It took time for me to understand this as well. I'm not expecting you to watch one time of this video and understand everything. But just note that the interpolation or the tag or the name here, up in here, is just showing your frequency and your face. It doesn't show you the slice. So that's very difficult because if I'm running this sequence, I only show you this. You do not know if I was using 50%, 60, 70, 80, or 100. You are only knowing if I'm using the interpolated on or off. Okay, now that's, that's what I'm trying to explain to you here by showing these images. 
So I really wish that there were some tags that could say, okay, I can see you're using 50% because it does matter because it's now a non-isotropic. You get, of course, more SNR and all that, but it's non-isotropic. It's the blurriness on the other planes whenever you're doing a reconstruction and all that. Uh, so that kind of extra information is really good to know if you want to just look at the image annotation text, but it doesn't say so. Okay, so this is a 3D space. So with the 3D space, you have four different uh, flip angle modes. It depends on what you're imaging, your area, what kind of way that you want it. So you have what we call constant, the PD variation, T1, T2. I'm going to show you four images right here. So this is the four images done with four of these flip angle modes. It's very difficult to tell which is which. One thing you can say, see clearly is that this one. This one is constant. With the constant, it's, it doesn't say anything else than uh, the flip angle. It's 115 here. Okay. However, on the variation mode, it just say var, var, and var. Difficult to tell if it's a T1, a PD, or T2. So let me show you here. This is how it was. So it's more or less the same in the tag name. So we were using an echo train of 30. It's an it's a extra information right here, which I'm going to talk about soon. But it doesn't say anything if it's a T2 or T1 or PD. However, if you want to uh, have a better understanding without looking at the, is looking at the, what kind of variation it is, you can see the differences because a T2 var would have a different TR and TE. PD would have a different TR and TE. And again, T1. But in this case, where I was just trying to scan fast just to get the tags right here to show you, it's very, very difficult to tell. So there is no way you can say it's a T1 or PD or T2 without the proper information. So let's go for the next one. The next one is non-selective. Okay, the excitation mode is non-selective or slab selective. As you can see here, this one is non-selective. It says an S. So if you're using slab selective, it doesn't say S. S. It just doesn't say anything like this one. So there's no information. So non-selective is uh, used a lot in the brain scans because if you do a sagittal plane, there is no um, an anatomy outside the field of view which could wrap in. But if you're doing, uh, let's say, a sagittal spine or whatever, uh, then you have a shoulder, you have a lot of anatomy to wrap in, you can use that non-selective, which is good. And another thing a lot of people ask me about uh, regarding uh, doing brain imaging, you're doing 3D, and you're not doing sagittal, but you're doing acquisition in a transversion mode. Because many of the sequences in, in the CMS tree is, for the brain is non-selective. So what they did is that they did a CMS uh, sequence from sagittal and then they turned it to transversal plane. And without noting this uh, excitation mode and they get the fold over and just wondering why it is happening. And this is the reason. So always remember your, your, um, your plane. And remember, this is anatomy on that side. It's used either face over sampling, slice over sampling, and of course, non selective or slab selective if you need so. And let's move over to T1 amperage. Amperage is uh, widely used for the brain imaging. It's not too much to say here, it's more or less the same information in the slice. But I just want to say to you the TI time, it says right there. And then you have the flip angle, it says right there. And then echo train is 180 and it's also a NS non selective. And without looking at the parameter right here, I can see that we are having a field of view of 256. And then we have an interpolation mode on for 256 with interpolated mode. So now it's 512. So that's how it is. Well, that's it, guys. I hope you find this video valuable. And before we close up, I have a question for you. Did you find this video valuable? If so, let me know in the comment section down below so I know next time what kind of video I will make. Nonetheless, I know there are a lot of 3D sequences out there. It's just not the space and not the amperage. You have the vibe, you have different, different kind of sequences. But I just wanted to make it simple, have a little bit uh, better understanding regarding these sequences. So, yeah. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell, you get a ding ding whenever next time my video will be released. So until next time, catch up with you and peace out.